Hey guys, well we've got another flaming post bag today. Uh, lots of stuff came in since the last post bag, so I'm going to open a few of them up and hopefully it will mean that I can explain some of the projects that I've got coming up too. Uh, so let's just start with a, one of these. Okay, so these are, um, are we in focus? So these are just little breakouts for power supplies essentially. I've got quite a few of these little plug-in power supplies with the uh, the uh, center pole positive plug. So I need a few of these just to make a few projects. Now I wanted to do some ESP8266 stuff powered from the wall. I've been doing a lot of battery powered ESP8266 stuff, but then you have to want more into the batteries and all sorts. So I just thought I'd pick some of these up. I've already got a couple, but you know, once you've used them, you've got no more left. So it's good to have a, another little store. What have we got next? Ah, okay, got another Raspberry Pi Zero. Now, I've already got one, but I'm planning on using it in a project and I can't be dealing with not having one. So I picked up another one. I got it from, oh, it's from Pi Hut, Man Enterprises, that's Pi Hut. So uh, it was pretty cheap. I think it ended up being about eight pounds, something like that. Anyway, another one of those to add to the box. Next up. This is brilliant. So this is the, it's from Pololu, whatever that, however you meant to pronounce that. So this is a power, a power multiplexer. So it's a power path management chip uh, and it's got a little USB micro on there. Can I take this apart? So it's a, uh, a sort of automatic IC to do that. Oh my word, come on now. Oh. We've got a tiny little chip on here, which is the TPS113A. So if you can see on the back there, we've got uh, in two, in one, uh, and then we've got out and the D plus and D minus lines. And we've got a couple of control pins on there as well. So essentially, I'm hoping this will work with uh, Raspberry Pi so that I can plug in USB power and also a battery pack and a boost circuit as well to bring it up to five volts. Uh, and it will automatically multiplex that power if the USB goes off. We'll see. So it's kind of meant to be a, a U, uninterruptible power supply, uh, a UPS for the Pi. Uh, I have bought one of these chips as well. It may well be in this bunch of packets here. So I've bought the actual chip so that I've designed my own board. When that gets delivered, I'll solder it up. Although it's got very tiny pitch pins. I'm not sure I'll be able to, but we'll see. Uh, next up, we've got a very small one here. Ah, okay. So this is, uh, if you'll recall, in my last post bag, I think, I did a, uh, did I, I can't remember. It was something, I wanted to be able to get analog. So, oh yeah, I showed you the, the radio cube, essentially. And I wanted to get uh, analog signals into the Raspberry Pi. And I said I needed an MCP3008. However, it's only single channel. Well, it's not. This is the MCP3008, although it's incredibly difficult to see, but it isn't single channel. It's an eight channel uh, chip. So I'm gonna be able to use that to get, uh, is it 10 bit analog signals into the Raspberry Pi, which would be great. So that's gonna be part of the little radio cube project. So next up, we've got one from China. So this is a, uh, a little uh, analog to digital. Whoa, this is a little analog to digital board. And it is the ADS something, uh, the ADS 115 uh, slash ADS 1015. Now I don't actually need this now because I've got the MCP uh, 3008, but this is, I believe a 12 bit uh, ADC. So 
This I was going to use for the Raspberry Pi. I don't know what I'm going to do with it now. I think it's only four channels, so it may not be appropriate for what I want, but I'll play with it anyway. It was relatively cheap, but it's an I2C device, so uh, it should be pretty cool to play with. All right, next up, let's go from this side. Okay, I've just got um, some really terrible probes. Um, I bought these, these were very cheap. I think they're about two pounds delivered. Uh, they're just sort of spare probes. They have very flexible wires, so that's quite nice. I don't imagine they're ever gonna be very good. Let's have a look at them in comparison to my other probes. So these ones are fluke probes and you can see they emulate the style a little bit. Uh, the, the cables on the fluke probes are really, really nice silicon wires and these ones, they're nice and soft but they're definitely not silicon so they'll be, use, be used in a, uh, a little project that I'm going to create to have something to make it more easier to read, more easier, just easier to read uh, the resistance of a resistor or the capacitance of a capacitor. Uh, because, you know, if you're gonna try and do this, either you know how to read them, which I don't, I don't. I've never been able to memorize things very well, so you would put your probes across the resistor like that and it would be a bit fiddly. And if you wanted to do a lot of them, say you had a mixed box of resistors, then it would take a while. And I noticed someone on the internet had done a 3D printed rack where you pop these LEDs on there and you've got some cables coming out going to your multimeter and so I thought what better to have that and I pick up some cheap probes cut the ends off and then um, create myself a little rack for reading resistors and capacitors so that's what I've got those for and uh, I'll 3d print my own I won't use the person's um, person setup just because I think it's more fun if I, I just do it myself I think this is the last one Brilliant. This is a uh, TPS2113 chip. Did I buy two or just the one? Quantity two. So I bought two so that I could do this prototype. And that is essentially that tiny, tiny chip there. So there's two of those in there for me to create my own uh, little power path multiplexer. And it also means I can design it into future circuits if I want to have a battery backup plus a, uh, a mains in or a five volt in essentially. So that's pretty cool. Actually, there is one more thing. And that is, ah, there we go. They're just little discs, little uh, wooden discs. And these are gonna be for a Christmas decoration that I'm gonna make. Uh, these look like to be laser cut. So I'm excited about these. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, but I think it might involve a uh, 4017 a CMOS chip and maybe uh, an A-stable multivibrator. I don't think I'm going to use a 555. I want to be able to use a couple of uh, transistors, I think. So that will be fun. Hopefully we'll get to do that in the next week or so. All right. Thanks a lot for watching.